Board games versus card games. That's the narrative that we're going to explore in this tactic of Elog with the idea, board games, card games, this idea of invoking an experience, this idea of stepping into the game through the artwork, through the mechanics of the rules, through the narrative of the game, and putting yourself in the place of that game. So everything is to support being in that moment. And for myself, a really good board gaming experience is where I'm playing the game, and in that moment, if I step back a little bit, if I pause for a moment, maybe to think about some tactics, maybe to think about how I'm going to level up my character, if I feel myself in the game, if I feel like I'm there, linked to the game, that is a success. Now, in terms of delivery for this, advantages and disadvantages to card-based games and miniature based games. Certainly over the years, we've seen an explosion of miniature based games, almost to where the point where it's expected. If I'm going to jump in on your Kickstarter, not only do I want season one, season two, season three, all the X packs, I want like 200 plus miniatures. Now, whether you can utilize all those miniatures or they're good quality miniatures, it seems to be kind of the standard replacing tokens or standees or other markers in a game Everything is miniature. But we do see some interesting card games, board games that operate on card mechanics or the primary delivery system of the narrative isn't a board and miniatures, but rather cards. So from this perspective, right away, visually. Visually, I think that miniature-based games are going to deliver a superior visual experience. They, they exist in space and time. You've got a nice board. You've got some miniatures, maybe representing a point on a map, a boss monster, or if it's a dungeon crawler. That, that 3D element really, really pulls you in and, and not only shows right away the location of things, it makes it very easy to see, but pulls into the imagination based on what you're playing. In addition to physical manipulation of the miniatures, don't overlook that. The ability to take your miniature and move it around on the map or in the dungeon to see other miniatures interact, that further pulls you in because things are changing in that, that physical 3D space where cards literally fall flat. They're laid out. You've got some images. You've got some text. They represent something in the game. Now, it's not 3D from that element, but artwork, in my opinion, needs to be really, really pulling you in. Now, there's various different tastes for artwork, whether you want a kind of true scale or more kind of comic book or historical. It, it, it has to pull you in. It has to work. Generic artwork or just a one-off print, I don't think that's going to work. The artwork will pull you in. But in my opinion, there is no competition between cards and miniatures. Now, on the back end, cards do have an advantage. Um, two games that I really love playing, they are out of print, but they've been in circulation long enough, and I think they really hold their own. Pathfinder, the adventure card game, and Warhammer Quest, the card game. On a side note, Warhammer Quest, the card game, um, it's a Fantasy Flight title from a few years ago when Games Workshop pulled the license and killed everything. It went out of print. But there's enough native copies, new stock still around. This is a fun, quick play dungeon crawling game that simulates a dungeon crawl from cards. And card games, in my opinion, these two show it really well. The advantage cards have is, if it's included, the variety of cards. I can print out for the cost 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 cards versus two or three miniatures. If we look at the size of a game, including it in a box, miniatures take up massive amounts of space, especially with more miniature styles going um, capital miniatures or epic-sized miniatures, where I can include more variety with cards. What this means is a card-based game, in theory, it needs to be implemented, can give you more choices, more tactics, more adventure paths, if it's an exploration type uh, fantasy game, more random for you to encounter. I could print up 200 cards, 200 monster cards versus 200 miniatures, each different, each interacting differently. So the same thing with locations. Um, what we see in Warhammer Quest is a deck of location cards. And I'm just using this as a framework and example. 
These location cards have some artwork, has a narrative, pulls you in. It changes the game mechanics. If it's an abandoned bridge, if it's a dungeon hallway, if it's a mountain mine. Imagine including those, um, if we go with miniatures, the map, the board itself, the tiles. That's going to pull it out a lot more. So if done correctly, the advantage that card games have is they offer you more variety, more possibility, and more expansion for a much less of a cost. Footprint. Now, this is kind of interesting too. And um, admittedly, this is coming from the perspective of a board gamer myself who has very poor impulse control and is an absolute completionist. So I do love board games that have expansions and different character packs and different add-ons, especially if it's a title that I really, really love. But I look at something like Dark Souls, the board game, which I love. Currently, I'm up to date on all the expansions and um, all the boss monsters, mega monsters and everything. It's, it's literally from the floor of my gaming cave almost up to the ceiling. It's it's intense. Now, yes, you can never have too much of a good thing. But when I jump in for Dark Souls, that's it's getting to the point where I feel like I'm playing TI, Twilight Imperium. You got to plan it out. Dark Souls is not casual. It, it's a big, big footprint. You see this with some of these miniature games that have lots and lots of miniatures. The board and everything, the footprint is massive. Forget about transporting this to the gaming club. That's a commitment. Card-based games, the footprint is much smaller, not only to set up and play, but also to transport. I go back to Pathfinder the Adventure card game, just looking at the first box, Rise of the Rune Lords. This is a massive box. This is this is a hefty box. There are hundreds and hundreds of cards in it, multiple adventure paths, multiple ways to play. That game itself is very, very portable, extremely portable. So you do tend to have more portability with card-based games than miniature-based games. Ultimately, what do you think? Is one better than the other? I, I tend to approach it a little bit more. I am a war gamer. I'm a mini guy. I play D and D with the miniatures. I, I tend to be drawn more towards miniature based games. And, and that reflects most of the titles in my collection. But I will say in terms of replayability, portability, and different components that you can integrate because it's not physically based on miniatures, certain card games, if done right, can easily equal rival or offer, um, a very different experience that's very, very interesting to capture and play. But those card games, you need to hit up variety. Don't just give me a starter pack with like 10 cards. And uh, again, the artwork has to appeal to the individual. It has to really appeal and pull me in. If that's done right, it also offers an amazing experience. So now turning it over to my fellow board game enthusiasts, are you all miniatures. You're like, Fritz, it's got to be miniatures. It's got to be a lot, minimum 100 plus jumping in. Or do you tend to favor more card-based games and that interaction gaming experience through cards? Is one better than the other? Do you tend to have more of one than the other in your own collection? 